isn't it remarkable to see how arrogant, how ignorant, how egotistical many believers actually are? Many people who claim to have some kind of enlightenment or revelation, some reason to believe devoutly, and they come across so arrogantly and claim that you're the arrogant one. Also, they express no good, or at least very few, good points, and they show their extraordinary ignorance. And they might even claim that you have an ego for questioning their beliefs. And yet, they're so egocentric, it's beyond belief. I just can't quite understand how people are able to express such arrogance and claim to have no arrogance. Indeed, they claim that their critics are the ones being arrogant by questioning their devout belief. Surely, if their belief is more than a belief system, a question of faith, there must be something more to it. Many of these believers don't even make great points. They don't even bother making points at all in many cases. They simply say, well, you're incredibly arrogant. You have not contacted this. You have not looked at that. You have not read these passages of this book or looked into that book. You have not accepted the ideas being expressed by spirit, science, and any number of different people and their so-called truths, or as I call them, nonsense. So basically, what they're expressing is the idea of the believer. We're not talking about a debate partner here, or a person to debate with in some way, shape or form, to discuss on equal terms certain ideas of what may or may not be true. Anything but. They're not expressing any such ideas which you can delve into and see if it is indeed true. They simply suggest because they believe in a particular YouTuber, or a particular author, or a particular set of holy books, or what have you, that you should accept those ideas because they accept those ideas, and they're logical to them because they have not looked into the research, uh, the so-called science behind it, because they are a believer. They've been convinced by certain ideas, and therefore, as a result, they accept. And they expect you to accept because they have accepted. Where's the logic there? Surely, if there is science in the Quran or in the Bible, or with New Age science, or indeed the YouTuber Spirit Science, or some other person of that kind, surely the science should be explainable, and should be put across in ways which are, indeed, well, conducive to the truth, their own version of truth. If their version of reality is indeed a scientifically confirmable idea, then surely it should be something which can be well, expressed through science, instead of simply adding in scientific terminology and ideas which allegedly link into those ideas and then, in actuality, don't really lead anywhere towards their belief, or indeed any belief. The idea of Quranic science or biblical science is laughable. The fact is they're based upon the times, the times in which they were created, the times in which they were written, and therefore there are massive discrepancies. Many of the ideas within them, which you can call, at a push, scientific, only worked at the time, or were true because they were known to be true at the time. There's often the great similarity between religious apologists and New Age authors. Taking certain ideas that are indeed confirmed, things that have been confirmed through the scientific method, and then moving from that to try and assert their belief as being true by some kind of tenuous connection between the two, is a common technique. You may end up with people who quote the Quran and talk about man coming from a blood clot and say, is this not science? Well, no, it's not. You may get people who quote the Bible talking about the currents, the flowing of the sea and say, is that not science? Well, yes, but it was previously known, the idea of certain currents in the ocean so you could travel with greater ease. So when these things are known, or considered to be a science at the time, these things can be passed off as science if interpreted in the right way in the modern day. The only difference between that, with very old books and the New Age movement and more modern religions, is that modern beliefs, they have newer books. That's pretty much it. They interpretate through mystical ideas, scientific truths, to try and support 
those mysticisms. The mysticisms are not supported, but by the correct use of language and suggestion, they try and suggest that their belief is indeed correct. The trick, of course, is creating this pseudoscience link. By your misinterpretation of science, or suggestions of connections between genuine science and your belief, you're trying to say that your belief is true and indeed confirmable by those suggestions and by the information which relates to them. But if in actuality you've got the information wrong or misplaced it, and these suggested connections are nothing more than wishful thinking, it does nothing to confirm your belief at all. And when it comes down to Christian apologists, when it comes down to Muslim apologists, when it comes down to people like Spirit Science and others, very often they don't feel like engaging their critics at all. In fact, the best they can do is misrepresent their critics in order to try and present their belief as being somehow more true. A good example is when Spirit Science responded to Martima 81, saying, I understand why you're doing this, but I'm not going to engage you. This kind of attitude simply shows that he's not willing to engage with his audience, including critics. It's easier to dismiss people as being simply negative, or they have issues, or they need to open their mind, rather than discussing the genuine issues involved. Religious apologists of whichever kind tend to operate in this way, at least to a large degree. Such people as Muslim apologists who go to a reason rally and then simply edit the parts they don't want to put in to their videos. Where they get pwned, they leave it out of their work. Surprise, surprise. The same characteristic is often true of Christian apologists and indeed other groups as well. But of course in debates in comments sections and on forums, things become even more interesting. The typical response from people who are in Falun Gong is to assume a person who disagrees with them is a communist agent, or negative, or simply dealing with some negative karma, which will come back and hit them in the back of the head very soon. This kind of attitude is quite common with the, not so much apologist, but the devout believer. When it comes down to debating certain points, which they do not really wish to debate, they simply throw out a response. So when you're questioning a belief, which is within communist China, but is technically speaking banned, they assume you must be a goddamn communist. Of course, believers of whichever kind will very often say that it's negative karma which is going to come and get you. Or you best watch yourself. Don't you realise what you're doing? And this is all because you ask a few very simple questions of a belief system. It's easier to dismiss a person as negative or somehow evil in whichever terms rather than actually dealing with the genuine issues. Many Christians on the internet, they won't bother trying to be apologists, no. That's far too difficult. Let's just simply say you're going to burn. You know, it's remarkable when you go to a video, say done by Thunderfoot, or done by Cool Hard Logic, or Living Dinosaur, or any number of these people, when they end up with people just going there, just to leave negative comments. These people are not making points. They're not making points saying, OK, you've got this wrong, I'm going to tell you how. Or I think you may have got this wrong, I'm going to explain my position. No. People who simply leave comments saying, you're going to burn in hell. How pleasant. Or if it's a New Ager. I mean, there are many people out there who criticise New Age, of course. Or aspects of it, myself notably included, I suppose. And they end up with people saying, you're negative. You haven't realised the greater purpose of the universe. You do not know what the universe is. You need to move beyond the lower dimensions in which your consciousness exists and move to a higher region of thought. Naturally, when questioned, they do not wish to express anything other than this childish rhetoric. So simply put, whether it's a mainstream religion or new age or some kind of alternative practice or what have you, what people are doing is simply repeating 
rhetoric. You're this, you're that. Whether it's an idea of hell, the idea of karma, or the idea of positive or negative forces, whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter. They simply use these terms as part of their rhetoric. They get their ideas that their belief is somehow scientific by certain people within their organisation or connecting to it, perhaps an author who simply expresses ideas of science and tries to assert a connection between scientific truth and religious belief. It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan.